Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about why central banks around the globe are buying and accumulating gold. We will also explore if we should follow the popular media narrative that gold is a dead asset or if we should follow the example of central banks worldwide and build our own gold reserves. And maybe, if we have time, we will touch on who is propagating the notion that gold is a relic from the past. We will look into that towards the end of the video. Thanks everyone for join in, welcome. Let's explore. I did some research and the data shows that global central bank's gold reserves increased by over 19 tons in the month of April alone. What's even more intriguing, 2021 was the 12th consecutive year when central banks were net buyers of gold with a record 463 tons total purchased. Meaning, they were actively accumulating gold reserves during the last decade. According to Reuters, central banks worldwide will be net purchasers of gold for this year yet again. No big surprise to most of us here. But it's not only a fact that they are expanding gold reserves, it's the pace at which central banks grow their gold holdings is remarkable. During last decade central banks have bought a net total of 5,692 tons of physical gold bullion. According to data from the IMF, global central bank gold reserves rose to just shy of 35,600 tons during 2021, the highest level since 1992. At this time, central banks hold over 20% of all gold ever mined. So why all this buying in the last 12 years? During late 90s and early beginning of this century the prevalent narrative of the financial elites was gold is a dead asset. It costs to store, and it doesn't produce dividends. Central Bank of Canada still ranked below Kenya with its zero gold in reserves. I wonder if financial industry had anything to do with the spread of this idea. Anyone who bought gold in 2000 for $271 can disagree with this assessment that gold is a dead asset. Gold appreciated more than S&P since that time but they were branded as gold bugs, backward hoarders and preppers. Anyone investing in internet stocks was portrayed as a genius. Well, I will leave it at that, just my conspiracy theory. So back to the topic. Why central banks did change that tune? Or rather when did the central bank's behavior changed? Let's take a look at this chart. Is there anything curious about the timing of the shift from central banks being net sellers to becoming net buyers? I think the timing of this shift clearly indicates why central banks reversed their policy of reducing gold reserves. It was the financial crisis of 2008. It was the time when financial system almost collapsed, and it became clear that world needed some form of asset which is not someone else's liability at the same time. In my opinion, this is a big part of the answer why central banks are buying gold. It looks like they are seeing a possibility of another financial meltdown in a near future, hence the pace of accumulation they are trying to diversify into the real assets. Assets that can protect the currency, or at least provide a tool to trade for necessities in case of global meltdown or a change to a new monetary system. Latest seizure of fiat reserves of Russia will only accelerate this trend. The way I see it, if you want to end up on the right side of the history this time around, it pays to follow big players. Central banks have outsized influence on money, economy and assets. They are literally setting rules of the game so it's better to pay attention. Obviously, no governing body is immune from policy mistakes, so follow with caution and exercise common sense. We all saw a massive monetary blunder with money creation of the last decade. We all saw the series of asset bubbles inflating and popping. But I would put my money on long-term strategy that was not officially advertised, as opposed to ignorance. Look at the gold reserves of the United States. As of first quarter of this year, total declared gold holdings were at over 8,000 tons. It represents over 70% of total fiscal reserves of the world's largest economy. With all that talk in the last few decades from IMF and others, why do central banks still hold massive amounts of gold in their vaults? Now, there is a big question as to how much gold US actually has. Or more specifically, how much gold United States owns. There is a distinction there. Some politicians were publicly asking for an audit of US gold reserves for a while. Only last year Congress finally acted to sign a bill into law requiring government to conduct the audit immediately and do so every five years afterwards. It would be a first audit in 60 years. All previous attempts to gain the transparency were successfully deflected by government. If you have nothing to hide, why stonewall and refuse the transparency? We will find out. Most of the developed countries are not actively buying gold but rather maintain historically substantial gold reserves. Germany holds over 3,300 tons of gold. France and Italy hold around 2,400 tons in their reserves. Most of the buying by the central banks is done by developing countries. And this is an important observation. 
why would developing countries trying to gain assets that exist outside of dollar space? I think it's a very telling trend. China and Russia have grown their gold reserves substantially in the last few decades and now on track to overtake France and Italy. We should take their official number with a grain of salt. Both countries are biggest producers of gold and we're importing gold heavily. There is an opinion that those two countries do not disclose the true extent of their holdings. Money Week in its article makes a compelling case for a possibility that China might have bigger gold reserves than even US. Reasons for that are obvious. China might be very uncomfortable seeing what United States have done with Russian dollar-denominated reserves and given its dollar-denominated assets are well in excess of 2 trillion, they are desperately trying to de-dollarize and diversify. Last things they want those trillions to go to zero. The arguments for the claim that China has a lot more gold that they claim are as follows. First off, China is a biggest gold producer in the world since 2007. It produces almost 15% of all gold mined annually. Now consider this. Official gold reserves listed by the Bank of China are at just over 1900 tons. Since 2000, according to Money Week, China produced roughly 6,800 tons of gold. Given that China is not allowing export of gold, the official number of 1900 tons sounds very suspicious. Secondly, government of China owns roughly half of its gold producers and since domestic mineable reserves are diminishing, China made a big push to establish gold production internationally. At the moment, international production of gold by Chinese entities exceeds its domestic production by 15%. And if that is not enough to doubt the size of the real gold holdings, China is the biggest importer of gold. They buy it through Dubai and Switzerland and those purchases are not always declared. But imports through Hong Kong are known and they show that over 6,700 tons of gold have entered the country since 2000. Those two sources alone put possible gold reserves of China at over 13,000 tons, way in excess of declared reserves by United States. Another reason for gold buying spree by the central banks was re-rating of the gold as a tier 1 asset by the Bank of International Settlements in 2019 as a response to 2008 financial crisis. Bank of the International Settlements is an international financial organization owned by central banks and serves as a bank for the central banks according to Wikipedia. New Basel III framework adopted by Bank of International Settlement was designed to improve liquidity of the banks in case of financial shocks. Before 2019, gold was considered Tier 3 asset on the bank balances, requiring reserves. Starting April 1, 2019, banking institutions no longer required to create reserves against their holdings in gold. This led to big inflows into gold market. Global ETFs added 877 tons of gold to their holdings in a year following adoption of Basel III and it definitely contributed to the gold price increase in 2020. Now to the arguably most important reason central banks were frantically accumulating gold. The world is in the process of shifting from unipolar geopolitical order in the last 40 years to a world with new superpowers and new alliances. Whether we like it or not. Center of power is shifting east. New powers like China, Russia, India and others will emerge and challenge dominance of the United States and the dollar. You can see this in accelerating accumulation of gold by developing countries. China, Russia, India, Egypt, Turkey, Poland, Hungary which tripled its reserves in 2021, and many others. This trend is still in its early stages, but the signs are there. Ignore them at your peril. And the last reason I wanted to bring up is the monetary policy of the United States. Currently, US dollar is still a perceived safe heaven. As you can see Federal Reserve and the current administration are waging all-out war to support the value of the dollar and its position as a reserve currency. It can be heard in statements of the Federal Reserve, and it can be seen in desperate attempts to contain other nations like China or Russia by supporting regional disputes or erecting barriers for trade or capital flow that weaken perceived competitors of the US. We have seen all these desperate measures by all preceding empires, and we know the result. We can't predict the timing of the events. The world is a very big and interconnected place. But given the current debt level and the structure of the US economy, coupled with mounting geopolitical challenges to the existing world order, it is not in a realm of impossible to imagine a strong devaluation of the dollar with subsequent loss of the reserve status. As we all know from history, the result of the reckless fiscal and monetary policy is collapse of the currency. I truly hope our elites will find another genius solution to prop the dollar. Maybe US will come up with another petrodollar or some other means, but for now I am stacking gold and silver. Now quickly on topic of who might be behind the spread of the narrative that the gold is a dead asset. Anyone watching price action of the gold for the last 20 years will see that gold, despite being a non-interest bearing asset, actually had a great run. Yet you hear over and over again that gold is an inferior financial asset. 
let's see who is most commonly promote this message. Lately, I have seen numerous podcasts and newscasts with so-called experts comparing gold to say crypto or other assets. And guess what a common thread was? Expert, if you can call it that, were invariably linked to an asset being praised. Be it crypto or some stock. No conflict of interest, none whatsoever. I would call it a day here. Thank you for watching and if you like this video please consider subscribing to stay up to date on our new videos. Until next time.